Hello, and welcome to Zim Explore. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this Zim Explore, we're going to take a look at the third of the golden functions, and that is Zimon. These are functions that can be used outside of Zim, <laughs> even though you've got a, a word like Zimon. Uh, that's a play on words, in a sense. It's like JSON, JavaScript Object Notation. Let's go in and take a look. Here we are. So what Zimon does is it takes any object, it turns it into a string, and then it can bring that string back and turn it into an object. Isn't that amazing? So down below here, here's a new squiggle, and we can stringify that. That turns it into a string that can be stored in local storage or in a database, or passed to somewhere else as a string. And then when we receive a string that is a Zimon string, we can then parse it and turn it back into that object. Isn't that uh, amazing? Now, JSON can handle object literals, uh, arrays, numbers, and strings, whereas Zimon goes beyond that. It can handle those too, but also handles any object lightly prepared. In Zim, all the Zim objects are lightly prepared. Basically, you need to, that object will need to have a type, a type property that matches the name of the class that it was made from, as well as an arguments parameter that hold, or property that holds all of the arguments that were passed to it. Uh, that's really easy to set up. We'll go into some code now and check it out. If you're using Zim on in Zim, though, it's already uh, been done for you. Okay, so I'll reduce this down, pop into some code, the golden functions, and we're taking a look at Zimon. So as with the others, Zimon has been made to stand uh, alone, so you can go to the Danzen repository on GitHub and find Zimon and grab uh, Zimon as well. Uh, Zim has Zimon inside it, so you, you don't need to do that if you're using Zim. We'll come on down and we need to turn Zim on true. We've set it up so that uh, it's most efficient if it's not on. Uh, there's a little slight, um, you know, very slight milliseconds, not even. Uh, well, I guess it's, it's, something's always got to be a millisecond, doesn't it? And well, anyway, close. Uh, not even delay as you create an object if Zimon is turned on. So we thought we'd keep that efficiency in there. In other words, Zim will act like normal if Zimon's not on. And now if we turn Zimon on, we can use Zimon. So let's see, we'll make a new squiggle. New squiggle. And we'll dot center that just so that you have an idea of what a squiggle looks like. We'll refresh here. And there's a squiggle. So a squiggle is a Zim object. Normally you would not be able to just JSON that, but we can say something like var s is equal to zimon.stringify, and we will now stringify our new squiggle. That will turn that into a string, and we can see that with the zog of s. Pop on out, we'll refresh, and here's what that looks like, f12. There is the Zimon object, which is itself JSON. So the final format of a Zimon object is, is just JSON. And when we bring it back, we can then um, make use of that. So that could go off as a string. And why don't we then say Zimon.parse s. Uh, that will be the, the squiggle again. And we will, do we, Refresh that. Yeah, we saw out there, note that there's no squiggle there. So we had all we'd done is turn it into a string and put it into the console. So we have no squiggle. We'll parse that. That turns it back into the squiggle dot center. And why don't we dot ska? Well, we'll dot ska before we center. That actually makes a difference. Dot ska. Hey, there's the cat. Um, dot ska twice as big and center it on the stage like so. You ready? Will it work? So we've parsed it. That turns it back into the squiggle. And now we're going to chain on the rest of that stuff. We refresh here. And there's the squiggle. Can you believe it? Isn't that amazing? And it still works. 
So you can use Zimon yourself as well. And we've got um, a sort of a somewhat complex example in here, but why don't we open up this code and see what's happening. There's two examples in here. One, uh, let's take a look at this. We're using local storage to store, show that, hey, uh, we can store this string out, and when we come back, we can use that string to recreate our object. So in this case, if there is no date, basically that's what this is saying, if we haven't stored a date, we'll make a date object. Now, as mentioned, Zimon needs to be lightly prepared. So there's date.type is equal to date. That needs to match the name of the class. And the date.arguments is uh, basically now. So then what we're doing is we're storing out in local storage our date. We're Zimon stringifying the date, which means this date object that we made is um, been turned into a string and is, is uh, being stored. So the very first time we run this, we're getting our initial date dot get minute. So there we are using a method of the, the object that we created. Now, when the date is stored, so the next time we come back in, there's going to be a date. So we're saying the remember date, please parse the string version of the date. And now we're console.logging the remembered minutes uh, remember date dot get minutes. So that will be the minutes of that original date. So it won't change. It'll keep on saying the very first minutes that that was used. Um, and neat, huh? So that's the one case. Let's see that happening. Now took a look at the second one. So we refresh here. Uh, ignore the memory. That was um, from the first example that we didn't look at. So here's remembered minutes is 23. And now we refresh here. Oh, <laughs> right. I've already done this, so that's uh, we didn't clear the clear the. Let's clear the the stuff here. So, local storage. There's the local storage. That was the old my old remembered minutes over time. Oh. All right. So first time minutes happens to be twenty three. <laughs> Is that a coincidence? I hope so. So the first time uh, happens to be twenty three minutes. Is that for sure? <laughs> What do you know about that? It's 1023. So um, that was our uh, very first time, 23. And now when we refresh, it will continue to say 23, even when our time goes to 24. So there's a time down here in the very right-hand corner of 24. And yet uh, the remembered minutes is still saying 23. Neat, huh? So we just used a method of a date, basically on a, a recorded string. And that string was turned back into the same date and um, place there. It's like a magic trick. So in this case, where we've got, uh, here's a custom remembered class right here with a uh, constructor. And it's got a memory. And we're going to remember anything passed into its constructor. So that will be um, stored in M right there, this dot memory. OK. Um, we, uh, if there is a local storage, this is what we're doing, but imagine it's the first time we're going to make a new remembered object with the word wow in it. And we do the same thing as we did before. Uh, now note that this is our custom class. When we make a custom class, we can set the type quite easily like so, and we can set the arguments quite easily like so as well. So you would do this for any custom class in your constructor. And it would always look like that. It wouldn't quite always look like this. Whatever the name of your class is, that's what you would put there. So um, now what we're doing is we're stringifying the, the object M that we made. We made a new custom remember passing in wow. We stringify it. But this time, because we've got the namespace there of custom, we need to say uh, pass in an extra object that talks about scope. So the scope is out on custom. It's called remember. Uh, you can stringify, I think you can stringify yeah, multiple classes in multiple scopes if you then say, well, the so-and-so class inside there is in a different scope. Most of the time, you wouldn't have to. The other handy thing about this object, the Zimon object here, 
Well, that actually goes right to there. That Zimun object, you can pass in the names, the string names, an array of string names of any properties that you also want to remember. So if on the object you save a bunch of properties and you want to recreate the object with those new properties as well, you can pass in, just have a read of it in the Zimun. You can pass in here something like props. I can't remember exactly what it is, and then an array of the property names. And what Zimon will then do is keep track of those props for you so that when you stringify it, it will also record those props as well, so that when you recreate the object later, uh, you the object gets made and those properties get added. Uh, that is quite cool because, of course, an object may have many properties and perhaps you don't care about them. So why record a whole bunch of properties that never change and or a whole bunch of default properties? So that's our way to handle that. And it's really no problem. Uh, it's very cool. So what's happening is the very first time it's just telling us what we had in M for its memory, which is wow. But when it comes back here, we parse it. Now on the parsing side, there's nothing more you need to do. We're just going to parse what's in memory. Here we had to add some extra things, but when we parse it, those those come along. Do you want to see what that looks like? Actually, let's zog local storage dot memory. This will be the string. So we're going to zog the local storage dot memory here as well. Let me refresh here. So this is it. Uh, remembered minutes. So it didn't zog it. Why not? Hmm. Did we save that up? It's on line eighty three. Let me refresh here. Refresh. Nothing coming from line eighty three. Remembered minutes memory wow. Uh, does it say memory? That says memory. This one says save memory, so it's not coming into this part here. So local storage dot memory. Uh, local storage dot memory is equal to that. And we cleared it. We've got the custom class remember see where we are. We must be in here still. Let's go local storage dot memory. Why have we got no local storage dot memory? Custom remember class. We cleared the local storage. The remembered minutes is showing up just fine. Memory. Wow. Do you see it? in this exploration. Oh, I'm in the wrong place. Right. You see it. This is the thing that only happens the first time. Once we've remembered, we're up here. So uh, we can just bring this up to here. Silly me. Silly us, if you didn't see it either. <laughs> How are you doing on this Explorer? <laughs> All right, so we're going to see what the memory looks like that we're building this thing from. Here we are, and here we go. So that's what it looks like. It's a Zimun object. Remember, the args are wow. The key remember has a scope of custom, so that, that gets actually stored out. So when we recreate it, it knows what uh, what scope to, to use for that. Super duper. Neat. That is Zimon, and this has been uh, an explore here on Zim. What do you think? Isn't this cool? Woo. So um, come on in to Zim at zimjs.com and check out Zim. Uh, also join us on Slack, zimjs.com slash Slack, and uh, you can try out Zimon for yourself. If you look in the docs, there's a link to a whole a uh, sort of isometric board that's been set up, so a board type game in isometric. And when you come back to that, it saved all of your results. And I mean, it's so easy. It's just, hey, zim on that. Zim on the board. Poop. And uh, zim on, um, you know, bring it back, parse it. And that works. All right. Ciao. Have a great day. Bye.